Hello everyone, and welcome to another of my tabletop game lectures. I am game designer Jason Bullman. You might know me from the Pathfinder role-playing game. I'm the director of game design at Paizo. And today, what I'd like to do is talk about adding special events and holidays to your campaign. I just had a birthday here a few days ago, and it made me think, you know, uh, one of my favorite parts of a long-term campaign is getting to know a settlement, getting to know its people, and then getting to experience its holidays. It's uh, special, uh, you know, kind of moments that uh, uh, really allow you to get to know the people, get to know uh, the, the folk in the campaign, and get to really immerse yourself in their world. So, you know, the first step in kind of any campaign is really kind of establishing a routine, you know, setting out the daily life uh, that kind of really lays the groundwork for the ordinary world. Um, you know, the farmers get up, they go to the field, they come home, they have dinner with their family, they maybe tell stories around the fireplace, they go to sleep, they wake up, they do it all over again. Maybe once a week they go into town to sell their goods, and maybe another day they go back to go to temple. And that's their routine, right? Um, you know, the, the king's guard uh, wake up, they have their, their daily watch routine, uh, maybe that night they, they dice with the lieutenant in the barracks, uh, then they go out into the town and, you know, have a few drinks at the bar, uh, chat with the local folk, and then go back and do it all over again, right? The, these sorts of ebb and flow of daily life and daily routine is really what helps set down the baseline for your world, the base narrative. Um, you know, as a GM, these narratives, these routines are really vital to being able to manage your perception of the game world, right? Uh, you have hundreds of NPCs that the PCs, that the players might decide to interact with on a daily basis. Having some idea about what they're doing on any given day is way too complicated to make carefully laid out plots for each one of them. So instead, most GMs rely on basically simple routine scripts uh, that allow the, the PCs to be doing kind of predictable things. But there is a step beyond that. Um, I think the way to add true vibrancy is to, to your world is in how you break those patterns. And you do that via events and holidays. Now, like I said earlier, you know, that farmer gets up and has dinner and works his breakfast, has works his field, has dinner with his family. That's his daily routine. And then once a week he goes into town to sell crops or he goes to temple. Those are already kind of events that are in his schedule, but I'm talking bigger than that. I'm talking, you know, big celebrations or observances or holidays. Moments that really break the routine when the folk of a town of an area come together uh, to celebrate or commemorate important moments or milestones. Um, this allows the PCs to interact with them in a way that isn't kind of perfunctory business. Um, it allows them to really kind of have a moment to just get to know some of these characters and learn a bit about them, learn how they function in the societies in which they live. Um, this kind of makes NPCs more than just bit players in the story. They become real, they become a texture of the story and uh you know that gives them a sense of having hopes and dreams and emotions and goals all of their own so let's start out with step one of kind of setting down how your your events and holidays are going to work in your world and and step one is really just kind of creating the calendar now um, you, you should probably, depending on your setting, already have at least a sense of what the days of the week are and the months are and stuff like that. But it's, it's good to start thinking about these things in terms of seasons, of based on its climate, based on its location, um, you know, based on it, the terrain around it. How does that affect its seasonal calendar, calendar, its annual calendar, right? If you have a town that's far to the north, well, their winters are going to be a big deal to them. Um, and having a sense of that in your calendar is a good idea. Um, if you don't have a calendar at this point, you know, you, this is a good time to set one down. Most adventures, I, I find, assume that it's summer, right? It's like, well, it's summer. I don't know. There's not snow. There's not much rain. I, 
go do your adventures. That's fine. Um, you know, and they, they don't pay a lot of attention to it. But a, a campaign that moves through the seasons, that cycles through the year, feels more natural. I, to be honest, tend to have the seasons cycle with our seasons, with, uh, you know, the seasons in our world. But that's not always possible based on the story and the type of tale that you're telling, but it's a good place to start. Um, so the, the key thing you're going to want to do is when looking at your calendar is to kind of figure out what that ordinary week looks like for most folk uh, in the area. You know, what, what do they do? When do they work? When do they rest? When do they undertake special spiritual or community activities, right? How does all of that kind of come together to kind of create the base fabric? Like that's, that's what folks are doing on any given day. If you pick a day at random, that's probably what's going on. Um, and, and that's kind of where you set down the, the subtext uh, so that you have, you know, uh, space and breadth to change it and add special events and holidays. So once you have that kind of base, the next step is to kind of identify moments uh, and, and times of the either week or year that are important to the people of that region or town. And I, I say region or town because you can look at this through several different lenses. If you go back to my video on, on you know, building your own campaign setting, um, you know, building your own world, uh, I talk about the bullseyes of creation, right? Where the most detail is the town that you're dealing with. The next is the region around that town. The next is the kingdom around that region. And the next are the kingdoms around that, right? You know, zooming out. Um, it's similar with holidays, the amount of detail, but understanding that some holidays aren't just regional. Some might, some might be uh, global. Others might only be, uh, you know, observed in one small neighborhood of a town. That's okay too. But you want to focus on where the players are and figure that out first. Having a better sense of where some of those other festivals are and what they're up to, that's good. But you want to start, you know, focus your effort. Um, so there's a bunch of really common varieties to think about when you're deciding where to put events and how to shape them in your world. So the first one that I like to talk about are the most kind of obvious ones. The first ones are seasonal events. Uh, these are events that occur because of the changing seasons. Um, you can think of harvest festivals, spring plantings, summer rests, you know, summer festivals, uh, you know, a deepest winter, a new year kind of festival. These are things that occur because of the change of the year. Now, what I was talking about there are, are very temperate climate things. You could have things that have a lot more to do with celestial events. These would also be technically seasonal, right? Um, I think anything that is predictable and something you can just mark on a calendar five years in advance is kind of a seasonal event. Um, and it has a lot more to do with the, the changing of the year and the changing of the seasons than anything. Uh, now, I, 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 I'm not going to focus on it, but uh, the harvest or, or fall festival in a campaign typically has spooky and horror vibes. I could do an entire lecture series. Uh, 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 I could do an entire lecture on adding a awesome kind of spooky Halloween session to your game. And I probably will at some point. So I'm not going to focus on that too much right now because it's one of my favorite things to do in a campaign. Um, but uh, definitely that's one to mark down on your calendar. Uh, next up are events based on historical things, and for this you really need to know your campaign. So if there are, if there's a day that they celebrate winning some major battle or getting their freedom, or uh, the day the town f was founded, or when uh, a key uh, figure in the town passed away, these would all count as historical events, something based on the people or the events of the people that is significant to them. Different from seasonal in that it's not about nature, it's about people and their activities and what they're doing. Having uh, a sprinkle of these throughout your year really adds some different texture to the seasonal ones, right? So if the town fought off uh, an invasion by giants several years ago, and that happened, you know, in the middle of uh, the summer month, 
uh, then, you know, that day every year they might commemorate, um, you know, all of the all of the, the warriors that fell though that day and all the damage that was done to the town and all of the needless lives that were lost. It may not be a, a cheery celebration. Sometimes they're they're solemn. Historical events uh, are, are very frequently more solemn or somber events. They don't have to be. Sometimes they can be a celebration of something good happening. Uh, you know, earning liberation or freedom is certainly a cause to celebrate. Uh, obviously, there's another big category, and that's religious events. These typically are bigger than just regional events. They are tied to a uh, deity um, or, uh, um, uh, you know, the events of, of that deity's life. Um, they are, you know, either holy days or observances. Some can be riotous festivals. Some can be very quiet, somber affairs at the temple. Um, it really depends on the nature of the faiths in your world. I, I, I can't tell you what those are. You're going to have to investigate them yourself. But, you know, for example, the day, you know, if, if you look at Pathfinder and the day that Caden ascended is a holiday. That's Ascension Day, right? Um, where all of his followers toss back a drink or two um, to, to toast their 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 god right those sorts of things are very good to add to your calendar and uh definitely add a lot of interesting story potential to your game next up i want to talk a little bit about uh recurring events um these are things that happen uh, perhaps not on a super regular schedule but they do happen every interval of time so i'll give you an example uh, in a uh, campaign I uh, ran, as a matter of fact, I, I think this got added to, to Crypt of the Everflame. Um, there is a, uh, a, a festival that happens with the first snow. Oh no, this was a home campaign. I did something different for that. Um, so, uh, I, you know, a recurring event of the first snow every year. Well, when does it happen? It's not on the calendar. It just happens when the town gets its first snow of the year, and then they have a festival shortly thereafter. Um, you know, uh, the spring rains when those come back. Um, it could be uh, uh, an event that is uh, kind of inherently unpredictable, but always happens around a certain time. Uh, I, I think to, uh, you know, like, oh, there are migratory, uh, you know, butterflies that make their way through this region. And for one week out of the year, they kind of infest the town and it, it ends up being the, the butterfly festival, um, you know, because there are these migratory butterflies. When do they show up? It's different every year, but it's always within a few weeks of a certain point. Right. These are these are recurring events. Um could have something to do with certain celestial events that are not incredibly obvious, like the moon becoming full or something like that. Um, could have to do... Um, it generally has to do with some sort of natural phenomenon, though. Uh, just not one that is inherently predictable. And then the last category of events that I would, I would urge you to consider to add to your calendar are truly spontaneous events. These aren't on a real schedule at all, but they are expected. So let's say um, the, the town has a festival whenever a merchant caravan, uh, this one merchant caravan comes through town because it's, it has a bit of a circus attached to it and the merchant always has the most, uh, the most, extraordinary gifts, but the merchant doesn't come on a regular schedule. So whenever the merchant arrives, that's a, a, a celebration for the town. Those sorts of events are also interesting to plan into your schedule. Now, from the GM side of thing, these recurring events, you know, these spontaneous events, the ones that don't happen on a specific date, those are ones that you can mention to the PCs, but not have on the on the official game calendar. But on your GM notes, you can totally just decide when they're going to happen, right? Whatever makes sense for your story. And the great part is you can just move them around. All of these events are, are here to serve different kind of purposes. You want to consider when thinking about these events, how long do they last? Are they a single day? Are they a full week? You don't want a whole bunch of week-long events clogging up your calendar. It's like if the town spends more time in celebrations and events than it does doing its ordinary business, then the ordinary business is, isn't ordinary at all. It becomes the exception. This is a festival town. That's okay too, to be honest. You could have a town that is just eternally doing festivals. Um, could be interesting. Um, but you want to sprinkle in variety, like in length, 
in tone um, and in type. So uh, it's, it's really easy to make a whole bunch of festivals that are just kind of fun and all about the folks getting together and dancing and singing and eating food and you know, enjoying each other's company. And you should definitely have a bunch of those. But solemn events are good too, especially if those are events that have a personal connection to the players or their characters. They're not all happy parties, and that's okay. Um, as a matter of fact, some of the most powerful events I've, I've done in games have been quiet, contemplative, uh, even even quiet remembrances. I, I'm, I'm, I recall back to the first season of Knights of Everflame, where after uh, the, the big battle of Cassin in the middle of the, the season, uh, after tragedy had befallen the group in the town, the next session was such a powerhouse of emotion because it was a solemn remembrance and uh, 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 celebration of those who survived, but it wasn't happy. It was remembering those who had lost and those who, who fell and uh, getting together to take comfort in one another. And it was really, really powerful because it wasn't happy and cheery. And, and there were moments of laughter and, uh, you know, moments of, of good time, but they were, they were not, uh, that wasn't the point. The point was to give people a moment to grieve. That's important. That's what makes a game feel more real. So I've talked about just kind of looking at your calendar and deciding what pieces you want to set up. I'm going to get to the second part here in a second, but let's let's sum up that before we move on. Uh, so looking at the calendar, uh, consider the days of the week, the months, the seasons. Um, what does an ordinary week look like? What do folks do on you know their first day versus their last day? Is there are there any days of the week that are set aside specifically for religious observance? Are there days that are designated as market days? That was a very common thing. Um, you know, we're, we're so used to all of our shops and markets being open almost all week. That wasn't always the way it was. Uh, you know, uh, farmers and, and merchants would shut up, set up shop on one specific day of the week. Everyone would come and do their shopping and that would be it. There wouldn't be any more. Uh, because the thought of picking vegetables every day and then bringing them into town every day was not really possible. Um, oh yeah, now there's a typo in there. All right, well, we'll cope. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Chat just reminded me that there's a typo. For those of you watching this on YouTube, uh, these are these are aired uh, live on my Twitch channel every Saturday at 4 p.m. So uh, every once in a while, somebody will catch a typo because uh, I love editors because I uh, type not so good sometimes. I'm a, I'm a game designer, not an editor. So I do my best, but uh, I, d I don't have an editor for this. So moving on. Uh, Let's see, what else? Uh, adding events uh, is all about what's important to the people of the region. You know, you want to add seasonal events, historical events, religious events, recurring events, and spontaneous events. Uh, those seasonal events occur because of the changing seasons, usually have to do with crops and weather. Uh, historical events usually have to do with battles, wars, liberations, things that involve people. Uh, religious events obviously uh, depend on the churches. Um, and, uh, and, you know, what they are observing and what, uh, what, uh, what special, uh, holy days they have, uh, recurring events, uh, are things that happen, uh, on a semi-regular basis, but you can't really predict what day they occur. Um, you're just expecting them to occur around a certain time. And then spontaneous events are expected, but no one knows when they're going to happen. So it may go years between them happening, and then all of a sudden it may happen two times in a year. Um, so that's kind of the, the longer, uh, form of those. And then add variant. <laughs> That's, that's bad. Add variance to the events in terms of tone, length, and theme. Ugh. 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 I'd say I'll fix that in post, but I'm not going to. So, uh, sorry, folks on YouTube. Yeah, that's the way it's going to be. All right, let's move on to part two. Detailing your events. So, you've looked at your calendar. You've set down a bunch of pieces. 
you've you've given them some thought. And uh, next up, you want to think about how each event manifests itself. Um, you want to almost put yourself in the role of an event coordinator. Like if you were the one in town planning this event, what things would you do? What things make sense? What things um, are would be a good way to commemorate or celebrate uh, that event, that holiday? Um and it's not just, it, it should start with, um, you know, tone and overall purpose, but it should move on to things like what activities or special moments uh, occur uh, in uh, the event to really make it special, right? So if they're commemorating a battle, um, you know, maybe there is a moment where the folk from town uh, march out single file file in quiet remembrance, each holding a candle out to the battlefield that was outside town, and they place all of their candles on this withered old tree that uh, was burned to you know ash, but is still standing uh, out on the edge of town. And they place their candles about this tree, uh, and it that was the tree that where the pivotal fight happened, right? You know. That would be a moment of that you would want to add to the event because it it adds an evocative scene. Um, so you want to think about those sorts of things, um, but you also want to treat it like a, a little adventure, right? Um, deciding on a sequence of events, each having its own encounters and maybe even challenges, um, because in the end you're you're building not just a bunch of exposition. You're trying to build a series of moments for the players to experience and have a chance to interact with. I'll get more to how the players interact with this in part three, but uh, for part two, let's, let's talk about the things you want to specifically think about when building your event. First of all, obviously, is when is the event. You kind of did that already with the calendar. Uh, but what when does it start? Like, actually, what time of day does it start? Is it a thing that starts at dusk on one night? Does it start at dawn? Does it start at noon? Is it a thing that just kind of happens? It's not really organized. It's it's just a party that happens once a year. So it happens sometimes in the afternoon when everybody finally gets together. Right? That's fine. Um, how does it start? Is there an opening ceremony? Is there a speech or some sort of ritual that happens to open up the ceremony. Let's say it's a spring planting ceremony, uh, you know, a festival, and it starts by everyone going out into one community field and everybody comes and plants a, a single seed, right? That And that becomes the community plot for the year. And as that grows, um, you know, everybody tends it and they weed it. No one knows what everyone planted. And it's always kind of a surprise every year to see what all of the plants are. That, that's a fun event. And that would be how it starts. And then after that, there's a feast and dancing and, you know, all of the, all of the usual stuff. How long is the event? Is it a single day? That's probably most events, right? I, I think having day events that take multiple days, you need a very good reason for it to be multiple days. Um, there has to be something about it that uh, mandates it being a longer event. Uh, but I would say that on the whole, most events are either several hours, uh, you know, they're like one evening, or they're an entire day. I would say they're probably not usually much more than that. Next up, you want to ask yourself, how do the average folk in town participate in the festival? What, if if you weren't an adventurer, what do you do in this festival? So, oh, you, you come into town with your one seed in your pocket, you plant your seed, everybody else does the same, then you go and, and help prepare the afternoon uh, first planting feast, uh, and then you, uh, you know, dance with the various folk in town, uh, enjoy a bit of the, you know, the spring mead, and then, you know, go back home and pass out. That's what your average uh, participant is. That's what the average activity are. Maybe there are special uh, moments or activities that you want to consider. So let's go back to the spring festival and say that uh, after that first planting and after the meal, um, every year there is a, uh, a contest to vote for, you know, 
the 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 spring the the lord of the spring planting the lord and lady of the spring planting right and it's a ceremonial role and their job is to tend the plants and water them every day that's that's their job and it, it's actually it's actually the funny part is it's a job you don't want because it's extra chore <laughs> and it's relatively thankless except for during this one party where everyone buys you your drinks so it's a double-edged sword that could be something interesting to add to your spring festival. Are there parts of the festival that are performed by specific individuals, and what are they? So let's say that you know there is a there is a uh, a local druid circle nearby of your spring planting, and they come every year to bless the crops, and that's a moment during this ritual as well, and it's only for them, and they come up and whisper. Uh, the secrets of nature to these to these new growing seeds and bless them to grow strong and healthy and hardy, right? Um, maybe that's what happens. Maybe the maybe the mayor of town uh, gets a chance to uh, uh, you know have a speech and uh, he or she gets to you know uh, hand out the food. Maybe that's part of their job is to hand out the food to everybody, right? So what are those things? How does that interact with it? Is there anything during the event that's a secret that the average folk don't know? Like, let's say these druids come up and they, they, they speak to the crops and every year they sprinkle some strange powder all over the crops. Nobody knows what it is, only the druids do. Is there anything sinister about that? Probably not, but you never know. And maybe one year something goes wrong, right? What kind of secrets are there in the event? And then what's the what's the kind of climax of the event? How does the event come, you know, fully together? How does it how do you tie the whole thing together in an interesting way uh, to to finish telling uh, the story of this event? So maybe uh, at this spring planting, at the end of the day, the 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 new lord and lady of the plants. Um, are uh, asked to go forth and give a blessing to the plants. And in that moment, uh, after the druids have whispered their secrets to it, um, there is uh, one of the plants will supernaturally sprout early. And whoever's plant that is uh, gets some sort of special prize and the spring planting crown that they get to keep for the whole year, right? There's so many different ways that you can add special things to these events. And it's just about thinking about them as a sequence, right? Understanding that these are stories in and of themselves. And and that's that can also be, the climax can also be how it ends, but it doesn't have to be. You can, there can actually be a different end, kind of a denouement for the event of a, you know, quiet, uh, bit where everyone quietly heads home after the spring festival and everyone goes to bed early that day because the next day everyone has to be up doing their full planting. Maybe that's part of it. Could be fun. So I think in thinking about all these questions about your event, that is how you end up uh, with the majority of what the event needs to be. That's certainly all you need in advance. And and some of those questions can be as little as a sentence or two at this point. It's just that's what it is. Everybody knows what it is. You're gonna want to have more fleshed out the more you the more the campaign gets closer to it because the players might get told about it or might start having questions about it. But you're still not to the point where you're running it. We'll get to that in the next part here. So let's talk about event details. Start out with the theme and purpose of the event. Treat it like an adventure. Consider all of the following. When is it? What time of year? What time of day? What causes it to occur? How does it start? How long is it? How do the average folk participate? What do they do during the event? Are there any special moments or activities? Is there, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, interesting spots during the event to commemorate its its passing? Are there any special individuals or roles? Is the mayor involved? Is the is the is the town council involved? You know, how's that all work? 
what is the climax of the event? What what brings it to a head? What what is the main uh, 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 moment that everyone will remember? And how does the event end? Figure out all those things and you're almost there. You're almost there, but not quite. Because the last thing you need to figure out is how the event or holiday works in play. So the real danger in adding uh, events uh, to your adventures and adding holidays is that they can be real breaks in the pace. Now, in some cases, that's a good thing and that's what you want to leverage. But the, compared to an adventure, a holiday can be a very slow affair. It's not action-packed. It's not crammed full of initiative checks and monsters slobbering at the gates. It can be, but usually not. Um, and, you know, with long moments of role-playing and dialogue being delivered to the players, it can end up feeling more like exposition than adventure. So, um, m the key to a successful event is finding a way to keep uh, the players engaged, to keep their PCs involved with the event and to make it feel kind of personal to them, right? Um, without that sort of personal connection, the, uh, the adventure doesn't really, the event really doesn't feel like a good part of your story. So you need to figure out why the event is important to them, why do they care, and what does this event say about the PCs and, and their group. And that's why I usually recommend that you don't start throwing events at your players until they get a chance to kind of know themselves and gel. Like, you can start out with, a, with an event if the event has something directly to do with the players. Like, that's how Crypt of the Everflame starts, right? It's, it's starting out with this, this, you know, coming of age ritual where young people are sent to this spooky dungeon to, uh, you know, earn the right to be an adult. And uh, it's all set up by the town and it's all fake. And that, that's the event and that's how it starts. But generally speaking, if you really want an event to resonate, you have to figure out why it matters to the player characters and, and in what way they're involved. Now, in many cases, just saying they're involved with the community and this is a thing the community is celebrating may be enough. But when thinking about how the event's going to play out, you're going to want to find ways to make it personal to them in some way, shape, or form. So you're going to want to think about how the PCs might interact with the event, right? Um, you know, after all, the story is about them. And the, while the event is a great chance to introduce lore and backstory, if they aren't really directly involved, if they don't have things to do, then it, it really does feel just like a long piece of exposition. So, you know, what that first question, what what do the PCs do during the event? Are they are they just participants or or are they assistants, right? You know, after they become relatively well known in town, they might be asked to help set up the spring planting. Maybe they're asked to uh, assist uh, you know, getting the plot of land ready. Maybe they're asked to escort the druids from their sacred glade to town. There have been, there's been mischief dealing with these druids in the past and the PCs are asked to help. There's lots of different ways you can get the players involved with helping setting up the event that then makes the event kind of the payoff for their hard work. That's a great way to do it. Um, are there any parts of the event that might be dangerous or might include combat? Maybe... Maybe some, you know, wild animal uh, gets loose and goes rampaging through the event. Maybe monsters attack, right? There, there's lots of different ways you can do that, but not everything you need to do um, needs to be um, a disaster or an accident, right? Uh, I think sometimes you can add things that the game would consider a combat, even though it's not really technically a combat, right? You could add contests or debates, or a race, or, or some sort of challenge between various uh, participants that 
rolls initiative, acts like a, a combat, but in the end, no one no one gets hurt and no one dies, right? So, you know, you're doing your spring planting festival, and part of that is a, a foot race. It's just one of the events that happens there. And you can come up with rules for the players participating in this foot race, and you can use the chase rules and have them have to go through obstacles and all sorts of stuff to make it more interesting to make it something where they get to roll some dice and have some fun and the characters that aren't just good at diplomacy and and deception and stuff give them a chance to have some fun and showcase what their characters can do uh you know uh, an archery competition is a great example of that. You know, the party has a very skilled ranger. He doesn't have any diplomacy skills. He's not used to talking to people. Usually the grim, quiet type in the corner. But give him an archery contest, and all of a sudden he's excited to take part in this festival. You can also think about what happens if something goes wrong at the festival, and what can the PCs do to make it right, right? As the festival goes on, does everything go according to plan? Do some things go wrong? Do, oh, the druids went missing or they haven't showed up. Someone needs to go find them. They're, they should be just outside town, but when they arrive, they've they've gone missing or they've been taken, right? And maybe the players can go rescue the druids and save the festival. I think it's important to also think about what the players might come out of the festival with. Like, what do the players leave the festival with as a way to commemorate their participation of it. You can almost think of this as what's the reward for this adventure. Uh, you know, do they end up with, yeah, a stuffed toy? Do they end up with a minor magical bauble? Maybe everyone who goes to the spring planting in a few months gets, uh, you know, a serving of this, you know, vegetable stew that's made from the plants that is magically enhanced that when you do finally get a chance to eat it for the next week you wake up and every day you have extra hit points i don't know could be anything like that right there's lots of different ways that the players can get something that they remember uh the festival uh by right um and then finally i think this is also and this is perhaps one of the most important parts of it is you want to look at the npcs that the players have a personal connection with and find ways for those NPCs to have moments with the player characters that are meaningful, right? Um, use the ties from previous adventures, cast in the light of the of the of the of the current festival to really have private, quiet moments with the players. So let's go back to this harvest festival we've been or the spring planting festival we've been talking about. Maybe Maybe, you know, the, the merchant whose life was saved by the player characters in one of their very early adventures, um, you know, this, 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 this merchant comes to thank them during this festival. They haven't talked to this merchant at all, but the merchant comes and thanks them for saving his life. And, and without them, he was afraid he was never going to see another one of these festivals again. And this was his favorite festival of the year. Um, you know, maybe, uh, the, you know, the farmer whose, you know, fields were saved, uh, you know, is extra grateful because the players, uh, saved his livelihood and made this spring festival even possible without it. They never, he never would have been able to participate this year because his, his farm would have been gone. These little moments really add a deeper connection to NPCs and turn them into more than just quest givers, right? They're not just standing around with diamonds or question marks above their heads, right? They're, they're there to be interacted with. They're there to be, to be more than that. They're there to be other characters. They're a, they're a rich tapestry of the world. And through events, you get a chance to see them in a different light. So they're not just standing behind their, you know, the 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 counter in their store, saying, "What what what can I do for you today?" And then they sell you stuff. You close the window and leave. And when you come back, they're like, "What can I do for you?" And they're just the same character. Um, you know, I I think it's really easy as a GM because it's an easy crib to just kind of have these characters act in rote. I. I I've certainly done it, right? I think every GM has that. It's like, okay, yeah, you go to the shop, you buy some stuff, great, cool. Well, that shopkeep has a name. You know he has a name. They've talked to him before. They maybe got a mission for him once, but now that he's not the focus of attention, 
He's just returned to his script, and events are a great way to break that. And that's why I think they are a really critical part to building kind of a vibrant, living, breathing world. Let's go to this third slide and hope there aren't any typos. No promises. All right, part three, events in play. Events can be a challenge for the narrative. Keeping the PCs engaged is very difficult. Think about how they might interact uh, with the story. Make it about them in some way, right? You know, give them a personal reason to be invested in this event or holiday. What can the PCs do to help the event? Can they help set it up? Can they help protect it? Can they help ensure that it goes off without a hitch? Are there any dangers or problems uh, that uh, can arise during the event? Are there monsters? Is, can something break loose? Can, can some magical incantation go terribly wrong? Uh, you know. Are there any ways that you can add challenges that are fun or intentional, like an archery competition or jousting or ring toss or a foot race or a, a duel of words or, you know, almost anything you can add to, to some of these festivals and have it make sense. What do the PCs get for participating? Uh, you know, do, uh, do they get a ribbon? <laughs> it's the easiest way. But do they? Does does everyone uh, end up with a full belly at the end of the day? Does do 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 the townsfolk all get a special benediction from the clergy that gives them a bonus for the next few days? Right? Is there some way that they can mark their participation that that leaves some sort of memento to this event uh, to really make it special? And finally, make sure to add personal moments with NPCs and other player characters to make the entire event feel more intimate, to make it feel more about them. The last thing you want to do is just have the entire event be the mayor giving speeches. That's really dull. Or worse still, the two NPCs giving speeches and talking to each other on stage, so it's just the GM talking to the GM. I, I'm guilty of this. I, it is, it is a, a, a terrible sin of GMing to just sit there and talk to yourself while the players listen. Sometimes it's the only route forward, but should be used sparingly. So uh, I want to I want to give uh, one last example to kind of wrap things up here. Very recently, uh, you know, I, I put a lot of these these uh, lessons uh, into practice with uh, the Band of Bravos. Um, we had a, uh, a festival. They got to a town that was in the middle of a festival, so they didn't know anything about the town. Uh, and it was called the Final Egg Festival. When they arrived at Kobold Town, it was this special festival going on, and they couldn't get into town because the festival was in mid-swing. And in this case, I was specifically using the festival as a means by which I could explain the history of the town in a way that felt organic and natural and automatically gave the PCs a kind of bond to this backstory. It wasn't just something that they heard from someone preaching on the corner of a street or something they read in a book. They experienced the festival commemorating this special day. And the special day had to do with the founding of the town. So... You know, in looking at this event, I knew when it was occurring, I because it was occurring whenever the players arrived, <laughs> because that's what the story needed it to be. Um, but it also, you know, I knew how long it was going to be. It was going to be a day or two. Uh, I knew that, uh, you know, uh, it opened up with uh, opening ceremony that the players didn't even experience because they didn't arrive at the very beginning. But I knew that there were a number of special events in it, one of which was a fight against various monsters in their Colosseum to represent the wild, untamed times that the cave had experienced. And that was the player's in. So automatically I gave the players a direct connection to the event because it was their way to get into town. I gave them a reason to care about what was happening around them because they were being forced to fight in the arena as part of the event. Uh, and that gave them a personal investment to it, especially when things went wrong and all of a sudden things were far more deadly than they were supposed to be. 
and that drew them deeper into the story. And by the time we got to the end of it, they had met the town's high priest of the of the mother. They had discovered that there was a schism in their kobold faith. They had learned about some of the major uh, locations in town. They had visited them, and they learned about the history of town. And it was all in the spectrum of one event. And that's why these are so powerful. Had they just walked into town and I treated it like any other kobold town, I could have gotten them a lot of that information, but I would have been lacking in a good framing device to bring it up, right? Oh, the, 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 the innkeep in town is like, haven't you heard about why we're all here? And it just feels very forced. But doing it in the middle of an event that celebrates the, you know, the, the final, the missing final egg of the town's founder, um, makes that whole moment, that whole story, a lot more special. And that's what makes holidays really work in your game. I personally love adding holidays and special events to all of my campaigns. I do it with uh, quite regularity. Um, and I especially like adding like Halloween or harvest events. I genuinely like having some sort of happier year-end winter event, um, you know, fun-filled spring events and, uh, and raucous party summer events, not to mention religious events and historical events. All these sorts of things get added to your campaign uh, in the back text of all of the other things that are happening with your adventure to give your entire campaign a deeper level, a more connected history and backstory. It's something that the players may not immediately realize, but it is something I guarantee you they appreciate. So I think that just about is going to wrap up this lecture here. If you want to uh, participate in these lectures or ask questions as part of the lecture, make sure to tune in uh, to my Twitch channel every Saturday at uh, 4 p.m. We do the lecture from about 4 to 5, and then we open it up to Q&A afterward uh, only on Twitch. Uh, you can find that uh, on me on Twitch and on Twitter and on Facebook and on Instagram uh, at uh, backslash Jason Bullman. That's J-A-S-O-N-B-U-L-M-A-H-N. I think that about wraps it up here for me today. Uh, I want to thank you all for watching, and we will see you next time.